So I said I was going to post the homework the other day and I didn't. And the reason is I thought I had the book at home and I looked for it everywhere. And then I actually drove in here and I looked for it everywhere. And I realized I had loaned it to a student. And then that student, I had to meet him. It's Sean Davis. It's a lot like you. I never get a book back. Defend yourself. I'm so man. sorry. You're not sorry. <laughs> I just had this conversation with you the other day. I'm probably out of a thousand dollars worth of books that I've lent out over the course of my career. A thousand dollars. All right. Easy. So last time we derived Gauss's theorem, which is of fundamental importance in electricity and magnetism. And I'm going to go ahead and use E here just to get your brain adjusted to the idea that this is an electric field thing, which is E dot N hat DA. So the net flux is equal to the divergence through a particular in a particular volume. So when we have a volume here and we calculate grad dot E and sum them all up in there, we saw that left face, right face, left face, right face, all cancel until you get to the surface and then you have a net flux out. And we saw that if grad dot E for a particular thing is greater than zero, we have some outgoing flux. We have a source. Outgoing flux due to a source. And if grad dot E was less than zero, we have a sink. Flux can come in and not leave. And then if grad dot E is equal to zero, that tells you whatever you push in has to come out of the other side in compressibility condition in fluid mechanics. That's what that is. All right. So there is a link for the divergence theorem if you want to see that again. And I think I can't remember if it's an example or not. And uh, one of the oldest examples in the book is to calculate, let's look at the vector and let's write this back down again, just quick example. Let's take uh, grad dot any vector V d tau is equal to V dot n hat dA. So suppose V is equal to the vector R. And suppose then R is equal to X i hat plus Y j hat plus Z k hat. And then I tell you, suppose I have a cube centered, centered at the origin. And I want to know what the net flux of R is through this cube. In other words, I ask you to calculate R dot N hat DA over this cube. You can do it. In fact, I will, but I want to show you the easy way to do that. So I want this particular, what is this integral? Let's call it phi, because it's phi F sound for flux. All right. Normally what I would have to do is look at the faces and I would go, let's say, let's say the right face. Let's look at a specific face. How many faces do I have, by the way, for a cube? I have six, yes. So I would have to, in principle, do this six times. I don't have to, because again, by symmetry, you can see the right face, the left face, the top face, the bottom face, the back face, and the front face will always give me the same answer, right? And this is a length one on a side, unit cube. Unit means one in physics. So it's one here, one here. So I would do it the hard way. I would write, we're going to do this using symmetry. We're going to look at right face And multiply by what factor? We're going to multiply by six, right? The reason you don't get homework is you'll see it on the notes. I couldn't find that somebody had the book. So I couldn't remember. That's why you didn't see it. I didn't forget you. I just couldn't find it. I had to track down the student to whom I've loaned the book. I will not say that who that student is because quite frankly, it would be casting dispersions on that person's reputation because they were late returning it to me. All right. So let's do this. I can, yeah, I'm sorry. I, can, I didn't think you were coming. No, it's not okay. No, it's not. I'm going to do it. One of my favorite characters in all of cinematic history is Fat Mumford. And have you ever seen Goldmember? 
the movie Gold Member, Austin Powers, big fat Scottish guy. Oh, really? He's fantastic. All right, so let's do this. So let's go through piece by piece here. So this is the hard way. This is the hard way. R, it's not that hard, is equal to, remember this is a unit cube centered in the middle. So here's the middle. Look at me. Here's the middle. I got a cube here. Okay, middle point, dead center. One half this way, one half this way, one half up, one half up. So R is X, I hat, plus Y, J hat, plus Z, K hat. And then N hat, because I'm looking at the right face. In principle, I should do the other five faces. But let's just look at that one, because I know the flux is the same. N hat is I hat. And DA, let's have a look at what DA is. If this is X, this face going back and forth is Y, and this is Z, okay? So DA is DY, DZ. Now let's put all this together. R dot N hat, DA then, over the face, right face, will be XI hat plus YJ hat plus ZK hat, bracket that up, dot I hat DYDZ over the face, right face. So this will be X. The reason I knew you guys have come three different times. In the old days, you guys would always just be sitting here waiting for me. The reason you did not get homework it's because I have a student that did not return the book to me. I thought I had the book at home. Then I thought I came here, looked for it all over at home, looked for it all over here. Then I remembered I loaned it to someone. This is why I don't loan books out anymore. <laughs> Sean. All right. So this is X. I had dot I had is one. I had dot J hat is zero. I had dot K hat is zero. So what I have so far for that face you came in late, but you're an athlete, so it's probably not your fault. It probably is actually your fault. I shouldn't give you excuses. So we're doing an example of the... Okay. You're starter, right? That's why. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I should let you come in late if it's... Uh, if, if you're not starting. That's giving you motivation. <laughs> oh, it's always something. And then... Um, another six people rotate. Okay, you rotate. You rotate. Yeah. I don't okay. Sorry, but then five points after I go in. It's like the old saying goes: the Bulgarian kid is always on rotation. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. It's just a thing I do all the time. I like to use, you know, like the old saying goes: you, you kill two birds with one stone, or the old saying goes. I like to use old sayings that are just completely random and have no relation to reality. You know, it's like the old saying goes: when you have a uh, a physics professor whose first name is Mario, you can expect him to have some trouble drawing parallel lines on a notability application. It makes no sense, right? But that's one of my favorite things to do. All right, so we are doing an example of Gauss's theorem which is what we learned last time, which is grad dot V over the whole volume is equal to V dot N hat D A. I'm going to do I'm an example. Do Excel, me. Me. So, so R is, I'm going to use the vector R, simplest vector in physics outside of a constant vector, X I hat plus Y J. We're going to do it the hard way to start. And I'm going to show you the easy way in a minute. So by symmetry, I only have to do one face and I pick the right face because it's I hat and get rid of signs. So I said, we're going to calculate this integral for V is equal to R. When V is equal to R, which is what I wrote here, here's the flux integral. R dot N hat DA, right face. Let me ask you both a question. I'm only doing the right face. By symmetry, what will I have to multiply by to get the final answer? Look at me. Top face, bottom face, right face, left face, front face. If I'm doing this face and I have five other sides, I have to multiply the final, the answer I get here by six, okay? because I have six faces in the cube and there's nothing to distinguish X from Y plus Z here. So if I do it for X, all right, so what I have here is this. <laughs> you're, from the whole, you're from Miami. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, I didn't get away with it. All right. 
So I'm integrating. I want you to look very carefully over here. And in fact, I'm going to draw a picture. This is the face under evaluation. Yes. See that face? Here is the distance X. This is a unit cube, which means centered in the middle. There's so much you missed. It's one half over that way, right? Yeah. So in this case, X is equal to a constant on that particular face. On that particular face, X is right here. X is equal to one half. What is over this face? Minus one half. What is Y here? One half. What is Y here? Minus one half. Z minus one half. Z, I don't know if I use the right hand towards this, but you get the drift, right? So even though I'm integrating over dy, dz, there's no z dependence or y dependence and x is fixed. That's not always true. But this case, I picked one that we, we can do as an introductory case. So my answer then for this flux integral is one half times the area of this little face. When I integrate the area, you just get the area. When you do with the D2A or D2, the, the second order differential area, you'll just get the total area. But if this side is one and this side is one, what do we get? Get one. Yes. So this comes out to be one. And I have to multiply by six for the other faces, for the other five faces, six total. And I get three. Great. All that work for what? Well, to show this. The other side is grad dot R D tau. So now this will become over the volume, I hat partial partial X plus J hat partial partial Y, yada, 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 dot X I hat plus Y J hat plus Z K hat times DX DY dz that's the volume of the cube correct calculate that dot product for me real quick i'll give you 30 seconds Then you got it. It's three, right? Yeah. Okay. I had that I had is one. Partial partial x of x is one. So what I'm going to have here is one plus j hat dot j hat, one. Partial partial y of y, one. Partial partial z of z is one. k hat dot k hat is one. And then I have dx dy dz. It's a cube, isn't it? One on a side, so the volume is one. So that's one plus one plus one is three. You notice you get the same answer? It's not a coincidence, it's a theorem. Neat little example, I always thought. Neat little example. Really teaches you a lot. It's uh, It can get a lot more complicated if you have, in fact, one of the one of the things we do Actually, I think that is that one of the things we actually do later on is a much more complicated problem with uh, a displaced charge. But that at least teaches you the mechanism of grad dot V and V dot N hat DA in a simple case. All right. So that is Gauss's theorem. Let's do Stokes's theorem. Oh, this one's no fun. This ain't going to be good. It's going to be bad. All right, let's do it. It's going to be bad because I'm going to make you do most of it at your table. Stokes' theorem. We're not going to do another problem. We're going to calculate the line integral. And I know not everybody teaches the line integral, but I'm going to give you a brief reminder. Work done by a force is F dot dr, right? Well, you know what? Let's do the brief tutorial that I did the other time. Because I don't know. I don't know what they taught you down in Miami Dade. All right. Well, that's why I like to do the tutorials. 
So the work is f dot dr dot product of an integral. It's integral dot product, right? So if we know that if the force pushes this way and the displacement is this way, the work done is zero, right? Because that dot product tells you when two things are orthogonal, you get zero, right? Better way to say it, Alex. It's going to be hard. I got. I feel like I should call you Alexa, but it, it just. Tell me if you want. No, I don't. I mean, I want to call you by your name, but if, to me, you know. So if this thing is going this way, a little amount dr, and I'm pushing down, maybe that's easier to see, right? There's no work being done by that force, okay? Because in your mind, what happens is you start to turn this in your head, and it just starts doing work. But in this case. Everything is in sort of an intermediate case, F, and you move it a little bit, dr, dw is greater than zero because F and dr are in the same direction. So this is just F times dr, which means if that were a mass, you would be speeding it up because you did positive work. Work is equal to change in kinetic energy. And then it's on a floor. And if dr is this way and you push this way, dw, is less than zero. Yes. You're slowing it down negative, which means one half MV final squared minus one half MV not squared. The V not is bigger than the V final to get a negative number, which means you slowed it down. So that's the work energy theorem all from that. But the idea is even at an angle over here, you would put the cosine in and in the two limiting cases where cosine is equal to zero, you get them lined up and you get this. If cosine is 90, you get zero, you get this. And if cosine is 180, you get minus one and you get this. Yes. That's a line interval. I mean, you can you can couch it in any any my recording. Yes. That was so brilliantly done. I would hate to say that that was lost for prosperity prosperity, you know. It would be it would be a shame. <laughs> He's just looking at me like this guy, I've had enough. You've had enough of me already. <laughs> Wait till Alex has seminar. When is seminar? I don't know when you need it. Right <laughs> you want to graduate fast, huh? All right, so we're going to go to the middle right here, right there. And I'm going to have a vector field, which means that now I've only drawn one curve, but what's true about a vector field? It's got a little arrow every point in space. Don't let it. So it's got a value here. I'm going to evaluate it here. So if it, I'm going to clean this picture up, but this is what this really means. There's vectors everywhere, right? Vector field. But I'm only going to really consider it at a couple of points. So I'm going to take a slice of it here. V right. I'm going to call this one V1. V2. V3 and V4. So this vector field might be doing some weird thing, right? Well, whatever it's doing, I'm only going to worry about this little infinitesimal loop. There's the center. This is the point X, Y, Z. And what I'm going to do is calculate a line integral around this loop. So let's talk about, given that this is in the, I'm going to put it in the X without loss. You know, you always see in the books and the professors say without loss of generality. Oh yeah, prove it to me without loss of generality. All right, I'll give you the argument with that, but I'm going to put this in the X, Y plane. So here's X and here's Y. So now I'm going to calculate the line integral around this little loop. So I'm going to even call it loop V dot dr. I have four contributions. That should be a surprise to no one because it's a square and it's got four arcs, four el line elements, correct? No problem there. Okay, so I want you to tell me if this is X and this is Y. I want you to tell me, and I'm going to draw this out, V1 dot DL1 plus V2 times DL2 plus V3 dot DL3 plus V4 dot DL4. Now, the next thing I want you to know, tell me is, as you go around that loop, what is in the vector, in the, look at me, please, in the direction we're going to go, we're going to go up 
left, down, right. One, two, three, four. You tell me what DL1 is. We're going to do this very carefully. DL2, DL3, and DL4. What's DL1? Which way are you going? It's DY, right? With J hat. How about DL2? Which way are you going? Minus DX I hat, right? How about DL3? Which way are you coming? Down. That's Y, yes? With the J hat. And how about DL4? That is to the right, a little amount DX. See a little amount? DX. That way, yes? I hat. We good? So V1 dot DL1 and VL2 dot DL2 and VL3 all share the same action, just different in detail. Draw this with a V. I, I didn't leave myself enough room. I should be fined, fined severely. I should be made to run steps before. All right. So when you dot a J hat onto a vector, you project out only one component. Which component is that? You should be able to spit that back out at me. If you, if you dot it with an I, you will project out the X. If you dot it with a J, you'll project out the Y. If you dot it with a K, you'll project out the Z. So far, so good? You with me? You with me? Okay. So this will be V1, Y, DY. This will be minus V2, X, DX. This will be minus... V3, Y, DY. And this will be V4, X, DX. So I have to add these together. Uh, now I have to redraw the picture. Ah! It never fails. It never fails. This is why I don't do art. There's a lot of reasons. You know, if you hold it down, it makes it, it, it automatically makes the line. Did you know that? Oh, no. Did you know that? This is notability. I didn't do that. Good. <laughs> That's not exactly what I wanted, but it was close though. Look at that. Uh, I don't know how to move it is the problem. I refuse to give up on this. So I'm at a bad angle. I'm not that bad of an artist. I'm at a bad angle. Nobody wants to hear my rationalizations. All right, much better. All right. Yeah, it is. It is. Stop complaining. It is. So this point right here, I move. I'm going to evaluate. Remember, this is a really, really small little box. Okay. A little small, little planar area. Okay. This is the point X plus DX over two, Y and Z. So I'm gonna evaluate it as an approximation to first order only there, okay, in the middle. I'm just gonna take its average in the middle. This is the point X, D, Y plus DY over two. Holy cow. and Z. Now we know it's fixed Z. This is the point X minus DX over two Y Z. And here is the point X Y minus DY over two Z. Do we agree with that labeling? We agree? So V one of Y, and here's the vector V evaluated at the point x, y, z. So what is v1? v1 is this Taylor expanded v x. No, it's v, y, actually. v one's v, y. So it's this weird cross thing. Very strange. 
So this will be Vy evaluated x plus dx over 2, y and z. V2, I'm going to give you a minute and 10 seconds to fill in the rest here. Let's see how you do. If I can spend a summer working with the copy of Lorraine and course in electromagnetic theory one or electromagnetic theory, getting this right, you should be able to fill in these other three entries. I'm going to give you a minute and 10 seconds. I'm going to pause tape so you don't have to sit through silence. It was recording the whole time. Yeah, it just looked like it wasn't. All right. So V2 is going to be Vx, which is the top one, right? And that's going to be evaluated at y plus dy over 2. Aliyah, you got that? And then V3 will be over here, which will be Vy. Notice that the minus sign doesn't come with it. I'm just asking about the vector. Okay, the minus sign we'll put in later. Vy, this will be at x minus dx over 2, y and z. And then this will be vx at x, y minus dy over 2. z. Good. So let's Taylor expand that. This will be vy plus dx partial vy partial x over two. Let's make sure we all know how to do that. When you do a tailored, and I'm suppressing a bunch of indices in here, okay? But you're evaluating vy at the initial point, at the point x, really what this is, just the one time I'm gonna do it, this is really vy at x, y, z, plus dx over two partial vy, partial x evaluated at the central point x, y, z. That's what that is, okay? But I, so, so I suppressed a bunch of indices in there. That's what I did. This one will be Vx plus delta y over 2, partial Vx, partial y, because the, the variable you're changing is y. You see how you're changing the middle one? I understand that it's the x component of the vector, but that's not the variable that you're changing. You're changing y, which means that's the partial partial y. In this case, you'll have vy minus dx over 2, partial vy, partial x. And then this one will be vx minus partial vx. I need more room. dy over 2, partial vx, partial y. So let's calculate the line interval. Around that little square. I'm not going to do this in detail this time. You will see it in equation 6D. And it's a lot of work, but if you have the, you'll see it there. In fact, you can go through it very quickly and you'll see where all the minus signs come from. Make sure you notice that I'm going to have one half in one case, minus a minus a half of another case to give me a total of one. So you see that happen repeatedly. What happens is all these cancel. They all cancel. And what you eventually get is this. This will go to partial VY, partial X, my, oh. Look at that. It looks like I have some kind of palsy. It's got some kind of disorder. Partial V Y partial X minus partial V X partial Y. And this will be DX DY. What is DX DY? The C area of the loop, right? DX DY, C area of the loop. More importantly, what is this thing? Well, I'm going to ask you to visit your memory banks, and I'm going to use shorthand notation just so I can keep this thing fairly compact. Vx, Vy, Vz. Determinant. This is what we know as grad cross V. 
If you had math methods, you should have seen that with Dr. Patel, yes? Mm -hmm. So if we look at just the K component, I cross that out, I cross that out, and I get partial VY, partial X, minus partial VX, partial Y, K hat, plus the other piece. You see that somewhere? You see it right above it, don't you? So what you have just seen is that V grad cross V dotted onto K hat DX DY is equal to the sum over that loop of V dot DL. That's not, that's K hat because that's the Z component. Notice this is a scalar. That's why I had to put this in. So that has to be a scalar. You can do that in any direction. And what you eventually find is a really interesting thing. You will find that grad cross V to no one's surprise will be grad cross V dot N hat. Let's, let's show this first. I was going to give you, I was going to do Jeopardy, give you the answer and show you the question. You know what Jeopardy is? Game show? I always have to ask, you know, because I make these references and I, you know, you know, Wheel of Fortune? You ever seen Wheel of Fortune? We're going to have a game show Friday one day. <laughs> we get ahead of the, we're going to have a, we're going to, it's a bit very, it's a huge game show. Oh, what? Oh, man. This guy comes up and his name is Pat Sajak. And there's a big wheel and you spin it for money. So it goes, da, 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 and the wee little arrow lands on 500. Then they have a puzzle and you guess letters and you try to solve the puzzle. Okay, I know what you're talking about. That's what you, that's Wheel of Fortune, man. Wheel, wheel oh, of Fortune. I thought a wheel is like a name and then Fortune is like a last name. So, really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is okay. So, suppose let's do a kind of neat example here or, or a, extension we did this in principle but let's do it in a little more detail so i'm going to do what i just did i calculate let's do three boxes i want you to look at these three so i go this way I go this way and I go this way. So I calculate, I'm going to add all these up throughout the entire, so I'm going to add all these up throughout this entire, on this entire surface. Okay, so here's my surface. Didn't draw it very well. When I do this integral, I go up this way. This becomes dyj hat. What happens on the other side when I do it? Because minus, doesn't it? So this contribution and this contribution do what? Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Where's the only place they don't cancel? on the edge, right? On the edge. So when, if I add up every single one of those little, you know, all those little loops and all those little faces, what I will get is grad cross grad, grad cross V dot over the whole surface. The entire surface is really equal just the line integral around a loop, V dot DL. This is called Stokes theorem. Let me tell you something, what the caliber of student was like in Cambridge in the 1800s. Proving this was, a, was on a qualifier exam at Oxford, I think, back in the 1800s, actually proving this. And I thought, boy, that's no joke, huh? That's no joke. In the 1800s. In the 1800s yeah. yeah, I would have been over my head. I said, you know, I got to go into something else. I don't think this field is for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I ain't doing this, man. I mean, they didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> there was no, yeah, this, there was no wheel of fortune. <laughs> no distractions. That's true. But on the other hand, on the other hand, though, they were doing all this, you know, dipping a quill pen into ink and doing it with the plague and everything next to them, right? Like Newton, 
Newton's miracle year where he discovered all this stuff. People were hacking up blood everywhere and around him. He was sequestered in his home. There was the death bubonic, the death, yeah. you know, I mean. He's like COVID. I think I was <laughs> smarter during COVID. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. So that is Stokes' theorem. And we will use that again and again and again. And it is remarkable. Um, this is what I call in the notes. This is equation 6E, just in case you want to keep track of where we are. That's equation 6E. All right. Yeah, there's a, and you can find, um, I think we did a pretty detailed explanation of that, but I did not obviously put in every single algebraic step. But if you want to see it again, there's a link to do Stokes theorem. Okay. So I did an example. I just did it. I did it before. You'll see the divergence in Gauss's theorem. But um, I did it earlier. I just wanted to get it out of the way a little bit because, you know, you guys are pretty good students. So I did it before. Okay. So, so far, all this stuff has been in uh, Cartesians. This stuff is mechanically, mechanically, this stuff is pretty easy in Cartesians because you know partial, partial X of X squared is 2X in all this. You know that I hat, J hat, and K hat are fixed. So when you take partial and this is an assumption we don't tell you you know you don't really see this very this is equal to zero partial partial y of k hat is equal to zero the unit vectors don't change in space they always point in a particular you can translate them around but they always point in the same direction they don't change you make one and then you move it wherever you feel like moving it and he does what he does that's not the same in curvilinear coordinates i'm going to show you something and again this is the tutorial Or linear coordinates. We work in Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical in this class. Okay. And as you'll see me right here, many problems in electrodynamics are better suited to coordinate systems aside from the Cartesians. We use cylindrical and we use spherical. The most used in this class, the only others used are cylindrical and spherical. There are parabolic cylindrical, maybe should Cattell did, Dr. Cattell did a problem in those. There are other kinds of coordinates. But for us, we are cylindrical and spherical only. And those two don't exhaust the possibilities. So we're going to work out all of this vector calculus in an arbitrary, well, not arbitrary. You can do it in an arbitrary. What we'll, what we'll set up here will allow you to do it in an arbitrary way. But here we're going to just do it for cylindrical and so on. All right. Here's the short tutorial, not in the notes. Short tutorial, not in the notes. Here's X. Here's a plane. Yes. X, here's Y, and Z. You with me? It's a plane. Okay, I'll write your coordinate system. Here's a plane, X equal to A. Here's a point A, penetrates right through there, okay? Here's a plane. I'll take the gradient of X. Here's X equal A. Take the gradient of X. These other two won't even matter, will they? What's that equal to? What's the derivative of x with respect to x? It's one. So I'm left with i hat. So far, so good. Here is y is equal to b. So what happens when you cross these two planes? You get a line, don't you? Here's y is equal to b. So when I take grad y, to none of your to no one's surprise. Partial, partial y of y is one, and I get j hat. Then I take grad z. If I cross these this line with, and I'm not going to draw it, the full plane, but when it happens when I cross three planes, what do I get? I get a point, don't I? You cross a line with a perpendicular plane to that line, you get a single point. So grad z will be k hat. What have I just produced? I've just produced unit vectors, haven't I? What is a unit vector interpreted to be in this case? It is a vector perpendicular, perpendicular to a plane which what's defining the coordinate. Did you see this with Cattell? Okay, you remember what Cattell? 
So that is the natural extension. By the way, this is how you know uh, the fact that it's normal has to do with you can define two of these side by side. I said I would come back to this. Look at that. You brought it back. You made a special trip just to bring that back. Introduce yourself to the rest of these students. Uh, oh, they know. Do you know uh, this Bulgarian kid? I'm Alex. Sean. I was wondering if you didn't know who your fortune was. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't. Now she does, though. Now when he said it again, I was like, who is who? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way you say it. Okay. It's not me. I, it, is it is you. All right. <laughs> it is you. <laughs> okay. So... This is the same philosophy. By the way, and, and incidentally, the way you know it's perpendicular is you can have a surface here. And I said I would come back to this, and now I'm going to in the tutorial. Here's surface one. Here is C1. Phi XYZ is C1. And here is Phi XYZ. And this is basically just like two spheres in turn x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to two, right? That's one sphere inside of another sphere. One has radius one, one has radius square root of two. So far, so good? If I take the gradient of this guy, if I look here, this is equal c2. If I take the gradient of this, Do it this way. Phi x here. Now nah, we can do it either way. I'm going to connect them. These two. I'm going to pick them like this. This is d. DL. Grad phi dot DL is going to be, if you look at this guy, here's this entire surface. All right. So if I have DL perpendicular to it, and this is then a maximum. If I get the shortest distance, ah, you know what? I'm going to come back to that in, in a different place. I changed my mind because I want to set one more thing up. I want to set one more thing up for that. All right. But what's clear here is you are constructing a unit vector by taking the gradient of a surface. Does that always work? The answer is yes. That's what it means to be a unit vector. We just did Cartesians as plane intersecting with plane intersecting with plane. Three surfaces just intersected. Now look at this from a different perspective. I want to look at cylindricals. How do I get unit vectors? Well, I just said to specify a coordinate, I have intersecting surfaces. What are my intersecting surfaces going to be for the cylindrical? Well, I'm going to pick one that has a natural geometric shape, a cylinder. Here's a cylinder. A cylinder is a surface of constant rho. Rho is, so the first thing I'm going to tell you is rho is a soup can, okay? See the soup can? Notice, you do know what a soup can is. It's a circle? It's a circle. It's it's can, right? It's yeah. the surface of, a, it's the, the metallic part of a can, okay? That is the surface of constant radius or rho. I'm going to use rho here, all right? So this is rho is equal to A. So currently all I have is this cylinder. Suppose I have this cylinder. like that. All I have is this, yes? Suppose I want to select that point. I've got to turn around. Here's X. Here's Y. Or here's X. Here's Y. So I want to get to that point. All I have is this. So I am here. Here's X. Here's Y. I stop. I cut my cylinder with a piece of paper or a big plane right here. Here's the Z axis. And I cut it. So that corresponds to an angle, phi equal to b. So I have this cut. I have a line right here, correct? At rho is equal to a, 
phi is equal to b. It's a hinge. There's a, you know what a hinge is? Point to a hinge on the door. Good, real solid effort there, Sean. Real <laughs> solid effort. This is the hinge. So this is the plane that I'm rotating. Okay. Okay. So what what is a hinge exactly? A hinge is thing about this metal piece. Oh, okay, okay. This metal piece. Okay. What a half-assed effort. <laughs> so there's the hinge. So here's so here's the, the Z axis and the hinge is right here, that metal piece that's rotating. Now I got a line, right? But it's this high up off the floor. So I take a plane and I cut it. And there's Z. So I have three. The coordinate defined this way. You with me? But it still all starts with Cartesians. It still all starts with Cartesians. So I have to be able to start somewhere. I have gra I have gradient as I hat partial X and so on. So how am I going to extract the information from here? Well, this brings us to coordinate transformations. Rho, unsurprisingly, is defined to be a circular object. Phi, unsurprisingly, is the inverse tan of y over x. And z is just z. That's one transformation. What's the other transformation? Go back and forth. Well, if I look down, I should see rho. Let's put the Cartesian on the left. x is rho cosine phi. y is rho sine phi. And z is equal to z. So those are coordinate transformations from cylindrical to Cartesian, and then from Cartesian. Those are coordinate transformations from Cartesian to cylindrical, and then from cylindrical to Cartesian. Yes? And we are going to then say, look, if everything I've said is correct, then grad rho should produce a vector perpendicular to the surface of constant rho, which means it should look, if this is, if this is our soup can again, right? Should point out like this. That should be rho hat, like that. What should phi hat be? Phi hat should be like this. Here's the plane, right? Here's phi hat, see I'm cutting it? Phi hat, as I move phi hat, should be like this. By the way, look at rho hat and phi hat. See them? And which way is k hat? K hat's up. So I have this. Here's rho hat. So what are these? These three are mutually perpendicular. And we will do that on Monday. All right? You learned a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> you learned what Wheel of Fortune was? That was the most important part of it. <laughs> <laughs>